Hello, everyone. Last week, I talked a little bit about uh, universal basic income and monetary reform as a possible means of being able to fund such a thing. And that got me some responses, which in itself was shocking. Uh, but on top of that, uh, it got me thinking, the, the responses and the video itself as I was making it, it got me to thinking about could we really have a utopia in this universe with the rules of the universe as they seem to be? I don't think we can get to a full utopia, you know, where everybody is perfectly happy and nothing ever goes wrong. And quite frankly, I don't think I'd want to live in one of those either. Uh, it, I think it would get tedious after a while. And I think that is exactly why we can't have it, because it would get tedious and we'd start looking for something else, something to break it up. And we would end up breaking the utopia ourselves out of sheer boredom. So I think that is the biggest reason that uh, we, we can't have a, a utopia. Uh, you know, as I say, this is why we can't have nice things. Because we don't know what to do with them when we have them. Still, maybe we can get to something that's reasonably close to a utopia that works well for the vast majority of the population, but doesn't get to the point where everybody starts getting bored and attempts to break everything. Well, that I think is possible, but I don't think it would be easy and I don't know that we'll actually be able to get there without some substantial changes in the way we, uh, as humans, operate. And I don't think we can do it at a planetary scale, for, uh, um, or rather beyond a planetary scale. We might be able to accomplish it on a planetary scale, but I think we'll see these uh, utopia-like settings more likely in space stations, uh, large space stations, uh, colonies on uh, other worlds uh, that are constrained in geography and resources and therefore population. I think we'll see these situations much more likely to occur in those cases than we will on a planetary scale. And this all comes down to what you need to do to accomplish a utopia. Now, let me define what I mean by a utopia. Basically, you've eliminated poverty, that is, everybody has what they need to live comfortably. And that means they're going to have their f food and water and air and health care and shelter and clothes, the stuff they actually need. And anything else they need to function in that society, like in our modern society, that would be a mobile device. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, they, as long as they have everything they need to live reasonably comfortably, uh, without any undue strain, uh, you know, without having to work really hard and for little reward and things like that, I would call that essentially a uh, utopia light, I guess. Better if they can actually choose the work that they want to do, but that's not always going to be possible. Uh, sometimes work has to be done and there has to be a fair way to apportion that work if people don't want to do it. Um, so there, there, there's going to be these little blemishes on utopia. But th this is also why I think these situations will be more likely to arise in colonies off-world, small colonies like domed cities on other planets, space stations, and so on. And that's because there, 
almost everything is essentially going to be automated. And as a result, there's going to be less need for basic subsistence labor, and people will be working on things that will tend to interest them more, or which absolutely have to be done so that everybody lives. Uh, you know, patching a hole in a dome, for instance, um, you know, that sort of thing. But uh, if that uh, grunt work, that, bat, that annoying work is shared around, then maybe you get pretty close to utopia, where most of the time everything works pretty well and everybody's pretty much happy and they have their subsistence met and everything's pretty good. But I don't think this will work on a large scale. And that's because it requires a certain level of central planning to make sure that the resources get to the people that need them. And it requires an insane level of tracking to make sure that people get their fair share and no more. And that is, well, a little bit problematic, especially in today's uh, society where privacy is regarded as a right and nobody wants to share anything with anybody. Never mind the fact that everybody's tracking everybody on top of that. So all the privacy you have, you probably don't have. Uh, we'll leave that aside. Whether And whether privacy is even something we should strive for. Uh, in a utopia, I don't know that we'd really care. Especially if you didn't have the bad actors. If the bad actors were dealt with quickly and removed from the... Uh, utopia itself. But at a planetary scale, you start having logistical problems. Uh, and that means that to work, to work in a planetary setting, you're going to have to have a hierarchy. You have, have your basically your ba a set of domed cities, the equivalent of them, you know, your, your metropolises or something. And they'll have to be operating in this way. And then there'll have to be some way to work at a higher level to share resources between them fairly. And maybe you could get it working at a planetary level. But the population is going to be much higher. And the odds of having a bad actor in there that is able to work out how to game the system or break the system entirely is going to go way up. And the damage that such an individual can do will be much higher in that uh, situation. There'll be many more people affected. And they're, they're going to be a much higher proportion. Approaching 100% of them will be strangers. So there's less impact for breaking things for those people. And that, I think, is where things are likely to break down. And this isn't even a human nature argument because properly functioning people generally will aim for the cooperation route rather than the total selfish git route. Uh, otherwise, society as a whole wouldn't work in the first place. But you have that tragedy of the commons thing where you have one or two malfunctioning individuals, and I have to say that it's a malfunction because it's certainly not going to be a benefit for the species as a whole to survive, but it certainly is a benefit for that individual in the short term. Uh, these are the people that will take everything from a common resource and not give back, and they won't consider the consequences for the future. Now, as the number of these situations goes up, it now becomes necessary for all of the people that would normally cooperate to also behave the same way, or they get nothing from that common resource. So we need some way to handle that. And until we figure out a way to eradicate that kind of behavior, and uh, I'm not entirely certain that we can without causing... Uh, more significant deleterious effects overall on uh, on the people in general. Uh, some science fiction stories have actually considered that uh, that uh, uh, potential uh, uh, result, 
and uh, you know almost every time they arrive at a dystopian future or worse. That's not to say it can't be done, but I'd be leery of doing it. And that's not even considering your basic psychopaths and mass murderers and that sort of thing. Those people, uh, they're still going to show up uh, because it's, it's a miswire in the brain that leads to that sort of thing. And unless we can eradicate those people and keep them out of our utopian society we're going to have substantial problems trying to maintain this utopia that we're trying to build. Now, for a utopia light, we can deal with that probably with a prison system and the sort of thing we already do. Uh, but we're certainly not going to get to a full utopia as long as this kind of malfunction in the wetware can continue to happen. And unfortunately, because of the way uh, the biological systems work and how human reproduction works, that's going to happen. It doesn't matter what we do, there's going to be those little mutations that occur that break things. And it's not always going to break things in a way that causes uh, a uh, miscarriage or, or makes the person unable to live or something like that. So I think it's that which is going to be the biggest thing that prevents us from creating even a utopia light. Because it's going to prevent us from actually getting there. At least on a large global scale. Uh, and on top of that, it would require global co cooperation. And in the current uh, global climate, I don't see any possible way we could end up with functional global cooperation on this level. There's too much ideological difference between the different societies out there. There's absolutely no way we can come and see eye to eye on sharing. It just won't happen. So, uh, will we ever get to these uh, utopias or even something like Star Trek tends to portray that um, nice, a pleasant vision of the future where poverty has been largely eliminated and all of that on Earth. Well, I don't. Th we're not going to get there anywhere near as fast as Star Trek suggests we might. It's not. That's not going to happen. Uh, but maybe, just maybe, if we survive long enough as a species. We'll be able to get there. But I think it's going to require a drastic population reduction across the planet for it to happen. Particularly in the massively overpopulated areas like China and India. And I guess Europe is largely overpopulated too. Uh, but still... Uh, do do I think it'll happen? No, I, I really don't. It, it's not going to happen. We're not going to get to even a utopia light. But I still believe we should strive for it. Because this is not an all or nothing game. This is not a case we're getting closer to it is pointless, where you don't get a benefit from getting closer. So the closer we get to a utopia, the better overall our uh, lives will be. And everybody overall will benefit as we improve things and move in that direction. But we're not ever going to actually get there. And that's simply because there's too much that goes wrong with humans uh, that takes them off on the outlier side of things. And in a large enough population, there's a large enough number of them to mess up anything that, that we would want to do. That's why uh, communism fails largely, even in medium scale. Uh, that's because of these outliers that game the system. 
that's why why capitalism and uh, you know, your total free market anarchy fails uh, because somebody's always trying to corner the market and get a monopoly on things. So we'll eventually, I think, come up with a better solution for the economic aspect of things, but we're still not going to make it to utopia because even if we get everything working nice on the, uh, the economic side of things and the uh, necessities of life, we're going to have societal problems and that's going to prevent the utopian uh, setting from developing. So there you have it. There's my little ramble on uh, utopias and whether what I think of them and whether we can get there. Uh, so if, if you want to be notified of uh, future videos, uh, make sure to subscribe. Uh, otherwise, if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.